Hello, and welcome to this Dawn Busters Taste Challenge. It's a cold December morning. I have already drunk three cups of coffee, Walmart's great value medium <laughs> roast <laughs> with milk and a Vietnamese meat pie pastry courtesy of David Garlapede from New Orleans East on US Highway 90, Chef Mentor Highway. Okay, this is a place you must visit if you want to have fantastic Vietnamese food. I have eaten there in that area with my daughter as well, but I've never bought the pastries. Okay, on to this. So you might ask, What do we have? Let me set this correctly so it doesn't knock me off. We have Old Crow. Old Crow, three year aged, the original sour mash whiskey started by Dr. James Crow in 1835, purchased by Jim Beam in 1987, now known as Beam Suntory because of the Japanese merger. But anyway, 80 proof, age three years. John and Neely says, good morning, Ron. I'm off to work today, so I'm going to taste some whiskey along with you today. Oh, you're off of work today. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I read that wrong. I thought you said off to work. I know. I I want to show you later something I bought, maybe, if I can remember to, because I couldn't pass it up. It was a little cheaper than normal. Versus 10 high age, three years, sour mash, whiskey, 80 proof, introduced in 1935, 100 years later, currently a Sazerac company brand. What's the difference? Well, One key difference, Old Crow is straight bourbon whiskey, and 10 High is blended bourbon whiskey. They're the, the same price, $9.99, $10.99 a bottle. So you say $10 to $11 a bottle. OK, they're both common in Louisiana. I don't know about your area. Now, the Old Crow Reserve, we don't get that. Never seen it on the store shelf, seen it on the internet, on the Beam Suntory website, the six year aged. Will I ever see it? I don't know. Is there a 10 high straight bourbon? There might be. Because as we know through experience, like literal experience in my case, there are Sazerac brands which only exist in reality, not in the internet world. In other words, they're not on their website. And they seem to allude to that fact by the way they have their web website set up. But anyway, chances are I'll never see that if it does, in fact, exist. What will be the outcome here? Uh, I'm not going to jump the gun on that because I've had some, I've gotten shocked already a few times uh, thinking that, oh, well, 10 High is not going to cut it because it's blended. Wrong, wrong, wrong. I, I assume that Old Crow might be somewhat more distinguishable. But I can't say. Bill McIntosh, the, he's from Florida. He said he didn't like it. Thought it was too dull. We liked it. The rest of us liked it. But anyway, when we examined it, okay, here we go. Old Crow. They use a bird as a character, but it's actually a man's name, James Crow. Ten High, they got Hiram Walker on the label, the guy that started the company. And they named it after barrels being racked Ten High, although apparently that was never actually the case for this bourbon. They just called it that because it sounded nice, I guess, marketing reasons. They got that stereotypical Sazerac bottle with that kind of lip at the bottom, that bulge at the bottom. 
rounded rounded uh, top or, or shoulders. A lot, oftentimes, that's how you can tell it's Sazerac, even if it's one of those if it's one of those store brands like Seventy Five South whiskey, because it'll have that same shape model. That's a giveaway. Plus, it'll have the same towns: Bardstown, Los Angeles, Louisville, Frankfurt. Okay, Owensboro, all their facilities. It'll have the same phone number. Okay, well, usually with the private labels, though, they'll put um, the store's phone number, like Albertson's phone number. And another thing about the store brand, somebody told me, oh, I, I think I can get such and such, such and such store brand because it's an Albertson sub subsidiary, right? There's dozens of Albertsons and super value subsidiaries like Vons and others. So, and if you live in a state that allows grocery store liquor sales, then you might be able to get it. Okay. And it's more than likely the same stuff with different labels, you know, like, I mean, the private label. Well, here they're golden, yeah, but this one's slightly lighter and it's got a whole host of sediment in it. It's just filled with powdery sediment and not so powdery, some big chunks of whatever that's supposed to be. <laughs> and I looked at other bottles and they were not cloudy. What happened to this batch? This I do not know. <laughs> Did it affect the taste? It didn't seem to. John said, I remember the old crow to be smooth but bold. Hmm. I tried some a while back and I thought it was quite good. I think we'll have it will have more aroma and flavor than the 10 high. Well, we're about to find out. We are about to find out on this cold morning. I want to start. I want to get, well, I want to walk a mile and a half, but I want to do that, uh, and I have to full close, but I want to do that. Uh, Livingston Cellars Chianti that I bought because I'm about finished with the the Carlo Rossi Merlot, which I enjoyed. Um, of course, it took a month to drink it since it was a 4,000 milliliter bottle. Now this bottle's 25% smaller. It's only 3,000 milliliters, but it's the same company, meaning Ernest and Julio Gallo, which they must have a hundred different brands of products, and it's all them. A lot of these companies are that way. That's why Marvel Comics was Timely Comics, then Atlas Comics, then Marvel Comics. It was the same company. They just put out a bunch of different names, alias names of, of magazines so that you wouldn't know it was the same company. But it was all coming from Goodman Industries, so it was an interesting way to do it. And I guess that's common in a lot of industries. That sediment thing is really really irks me. I'm shocked that your bottle doesn't taste off considering it's the only bottle that you've run across with sediment in it. Of any liquor, yes, the only one. No, it doesn't taste off at all. It tastes just like regular little bourbon whiskey. So bizarre. Don't some of these companies or most of these companies use what they call chill filtering? Maybe their machine wasn't working. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it needed to be recalibrated or something. Okay, trying to breathe decently. Never breathed too well in Louisiana with all the mold, but it's uh, smoky, charred, some vanilla, some caramel, as they would say in New York City, yada, 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 right? Because after all, it's bourbon whiskey and they share so many commonalities. Same thing, same thing. This one has a little beeswax and honeycomb, though. Hmm. Now remember, though, don't. I gotta watch it because the ten high from experience didn't have too much aroma relative to the flavor. The aroma was sort of muted, but then the flavor was bursting. So, you gotta watch it. 
I strongly recommend people do blind taste tests. I don't see that happening much. It's funny because people will call do a lot of call outs, but they won't do a lot of their own exercise. You know what I'm saying? Do it before you call out. This has some <clears throat> sour mash type, I should say sourdough type thing, you know, sourdough bagels. And uh, I think that is coming from the sour mash process. Now, before we go on, just remember, just remember, you could pick any of these major companies and you could literally devote your channel to them. And you would in no, you would not in any, it would not be any time soon that you would run out of brands, okay? You just get on Beam Suntory's website, look up whiskey and then bourbon whiskeys. Let's say you just pick those. And you did one a week, two a week, months and months and months you would go through it. And that's just the ones that they list for every one brand they list, there may be 20 they don't list. And then each brand you click and then it's got variants. Like for instance, Jim Beam. So then you, it, that's what I say, it grows exponentially. It's just that would take you so long. Just Diageo would take you so long. And those companies do tend to, from my experience, which is limited, they seem to have a house style, style sort of. Or you could, the one that would really catch you up is Sazerac. I mean, the ones they list is incredible, the amount. So you take what Sazerac lists and then take what they also produce that they don't happen to list. And you could just spend 10 years having a video channel and say, call it my Sazerac liquor video channel. And you wouldn't run out of, you wouldn't run out. You just wouldn't run out of things to review. I'm trying to think here. I'm not taking little sniffs either. I'm taking deep inhalations with mouth open, like they say on Jim Beam website. Best way to do it, you get more of an aroma appreciation. I don't know. I'm doing both mouth open, mouth closed. It's tough. Tough, 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 tough. I can't really tell. Let's go with taste. So by aroma, this it's a tie. They're both really nice, and there's no. I can't. I can't figure it out. Taste. I'm trying not to glance down because if I see that, if I see it, I'm gonna know one is cloudy. Candy, sweetness, caramel, candy. Where there's maybe without the butter, you know. You know what I'm talking about char, oak, dried flowers, even more candy than smoke here. Oh, it makes me think it's old crow. I'll have to do my own blind taste test and you're right. It's much more difficult than people think. People may give you a hard time when you get those things wrong, but they aren't doing these videos. No, not too much. Few people do it though. And a few people do it right. Now, some people do it wrong where they just have like eight different things lined up. And they're doing a blind taste test. I don't even know how you would tell them apart if they weren't, if it wasn't blind, really. Like how you would, what's, it's too many, it's too wiggly, you know, there's too many things going on with eight different brands. It needs to be narrowed down. And then I can't follow the video. They're like, this one tastes like that. It's like a circus, a three ring circus where you can't follow the action. You know, I went to a Ringling Brothers Circus once, and it was three ring. You're watching that, and you're watching that, and you're watching that. And pretty soon you get, it's like you can't take it. Like sensory overload. <laughs> but then the guys in Kentucky, those guys, uh, Radar and those guys, can't remember their channel name, but they'll do blind taste tests sometimes, and they do a good job with it. Ah. There's no... This one here on the right, maybe your left, but my right, is so much more charred. And I went to Barton 1792 Distillery in Bardstown, and they showed me a plank of that charred wood, and it was so thick. And uh, uh, Austin Nichols, 
in other words, Campari Group, who does the Wild Turkey, talked about how one of their brands, or at least one, the Wild Turkey Bourbon, used to be Wild Turkey 81, introduced in 2012, only five years ago. It uh, They use what they call alligator char. It's just the thickest char. You know, it's got that rumple like it's an alligator skin. And, and I noticed that's what, uh, it, that seemed to be what Barton does, Sazerac. Then they take that Paul Masson brandy and, and, and soak it in there, let it sit in there for four years. So that really gives it a distinctive flavor. And this one tastes like that. I don't, I don't know. Some people might drink the Sazerac stuff, meaning Barton, meaning Buffalo Trace. And they might find it's too charred. It's too much of a charred charcoal wood barbecue pit type thing. You know what I mean? Where other people would really like that. It depends on the personal preference, right? It's not a good or bad thing. It's just what you like, right? It's like eating steak. Now, some people will say, this is the way you got to eat it. You ever notice that like on Facebook or something? But what they mean is this is the way I like to eat it. But they'll make these definitive statements. People that eat well done steak are fools, you know. No, if that's the way they like it, they're not fools. And to me, to me, you would be a fool to say that. Instead of just saying, well, people like steak fried, let's say fried, fried different ways or grilled different ways. And this is the way I like it. Oh, well. This one does not have much char at all. It's more of a sugar presentation more than it's a sugar presentation more than anything. Are these similar in flavor? Not at all. I mean, they're similar in the sense that they have that flavor is commonly associated with whiskey, as the U.S. government says. But within that within that parameter, no, they're not similar at all. I mean, yeah, there's some char. A lot of corn in the back note. But this one... Every sip is a charcoal-soaked liquid attack. Interestingly, notice I haven't mentioned alcohol. Notice that? There's a burn, and it builds. You know, it, it kind of sets in as you're drinking it. What do you expect? But these are small little tasting cups, so I'm glad, you know, people will remark, oh, it's 6.30 in the morning or 6 in the morning. Actually. How can you drink that much? Well, it's... It's kind of more like tasting it when you look at it. These things are so tiny. <laughs> These little glasses are, if they were any tinier, I wouldn't be able to hardly pick them up. They're like thimble size nearly. So it's not like I've got two, two big whiskey glasses and I'm filling them halfway and guzzling it. You know what I mean? Let's, let's use some uh, discernment. Those same people, I'll watch them, and they'll be walking and drinking a Diet Coke. Hmm. You think Diet Coke is more healthy to drink at 6 in the morning than, than bourbon whiskey? Um, I'm not a dietitian, nor do I claim to have any scientific knowledge. But in my booklet, I think that one of those products would not be nearly as healthy to drink or to sip on even, because you know Diet Coke, you're looking at people walking around drinking 20 ounce bottles. We're talking about little sips. Yeah, anyway, I think the one on the right is 10 high and I think the one on the left could be reversed for you. You know how these things go. It might be flipped for some people and not flipped for others. I've noticed that with these things. But um, 
I think the one on the left is Old Crow and the one on the right is Ten High, okay? Because I think the Ten High is more charcoal oriented. Now I'm going to feel like a fool if I get it wrong. But then the viewer might say, yeah, but you'll do another taste challenge in two days, huh? Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> I would do it if I wasn't doing videos, you understand? Nobody's getting paid hardly any way anymore. If they were doing it for the money, that's gone because everything's getting knocked out as far as monetization, so you can forget that. That's a, that's, that's a, that's bye-bye. I think that's why you're going to see some people drop out, out, because they weren't in it for the fun of it anyway. They were in it for the illusory idea that there was going to be some monetary gain. But that was a, they're fooling themselves. You look at all the time they put into it, and we know time is money. With all their extensive graphics and editing, must take hours for each video. And then the payoff now, especially since the revamp is going to be so small that there, there's a net loss. It's got to be, if you factor in time. They might have bought software. They could have gone to work part-time at McDonald's and made more money if they wanted to do that. Yep, sure could have. Uh, I do believe that because what you're going to make, what's the minimum wage, Seven twenty-five an hour? Hey, you're going to make more than working there doing this. <laughs> there's, no, there's no contest. Anyway. Enough of that, enough of the rant and rave, but uh, really it's the truth. Even when the even when the payoffs were in their prime without the new revamp, it still was not comparable to a minimum wage job at McDonald's or Burger King or rallies, etc. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Hasta la vista, baby. Okay, uh, our chihuahua. Mucho gusto. Well, I got it wrong. <laughs> People say, uh, viewers might say, that ain't no shock. Who said it was a shock? Whoever said I was an expert? You might have. I never said it. Okay, well, okay. All right, all right, okay, okay, all right. This is Old Crow, the, the real charred, smoky one. And the one that was more sweet was the 10 high, hell. I noticed one thing, though. Yeah, it does have a little char coming into play. When you do the matchups, it seems to almost change the taste of the whiskey. You know what I mean? Like, if you do 10 high against this product, it tastes different than if you put it up against some other product. And I had that experience with Round round Rock. Yeah, Round Rock. Rolling Rock beer. I bought a six-pack, and I did a taste challenge against Old Milwaukee. I deleted it. I didn't like the way it came out. But beyond that, the Rolling Rock tastes like paper. Like I said, how could it get oxidized in a can? You know, it tasted like... Um, like, sort of like those Central American lagers at loose leaf paper. It was no kind of challenge, the old Milwaukee. It was so strange. So I don't know if I'm going to do any more taste. I was going to put up against Miller High Life and Paps, but now I'm thinking I'll just scrap the whole project and just say, oh, well, I paid $4.49 plus tax for the Rolling Rock. Forget it. I got to think about that. But, it's, but it might taste different, you know, against different brands. It might, what? What's here today may be gone tomorrow. I find that with these things. Oh, well, hey, well, Old Crow wins. It tasted better, had more character, and uh, um, okay, so that's the first strike against 10 high. You know three strikes, you're out. Remember that? So it's been a wash so far, right? I hadn't really won. But now we lose. It loses. So I don't think Old Crow ever lost that maybe once. I don't think it ever lost. Well, that's the proper content. I mean, I got the answer wrong. I mean, that was bad on my 
count on you know for me i did bad i did poorly but uh the old crow did well so what do we learn about old crow well you can go to winn dixie and get a bottle for 9.99 and it can hold its own it can hold its own don't laugh at the old crow 10 high does okay but not today Okay. All right. Uh, many people are quick to say that something you're doing is wrong. I've noticed that. It's comical, really. What works for some doesn't work for all. I like how to, like how to pour a beer, for example. No, I've given people. To, they say you're stupid. You know, it's a real problem when you start a discussion with the with the word you usually usually that's a bad sign i was listening to this or reading this interview with nfl officials or could have been baseball umpires yeah that was what it was baseball umpire. they said they were talking about when people get ejected from a game they said usually the problem starts when the when the manager runs out and starts the conversation with you and then it leads to real problems And that's how people will approach it with the beer pouring. Not, they won't start with, I thought beer pouring should be done such and such a way, whatever. No, they start off with a definitive, you are stupid, or you don't know how to pour beer. And I ask them, I say, based on what? What are you saying? What are you basing this on? 99 out of 100 times, I never get a response. And then all, they'll just say, everybody knows you're not supposed to pour it in straight, straight in pour. I say, how does everybody know that? And then I say, I have sources right here, sources that from major breweries that have been in business nearly 150 years. And they're saying, they're, they're saying the opposite. You know, and I'll say, what is your expertise? Nothing, no response. Wow, we have a winner. There have been so many ties lately. I know, right? It's time for a winner, even though I was wrong. I don't mind being wrong if we have a winner, at least. I have noticed some flinty paper-like notes in Rolling Rock before. Wow, that's weird. My problem with Rolling Rock before 2006 was it always had a chalky undertaste, and that was really unpleasant. It was like you drank it, and then it would taste like chalky, like limestone. Now, I think that was some kind of thing about Latrobe, Pennsylvania, something about. But I think really the problem was that, that the company was going down, down, down. They they would they had no money, and their product was starting to decline so badly. And then what happened? Anheuser Bush in two thousand six said, "Here's the here's the money. We want to buy you out." And the family said, "We'll take it. We'll take it." And they moved the production to the Anheuser Busch facilities, and I noticed a big increase in the in the quality. No more chalky undertaste. Well, I mean, you know, it tastes like regular old beer after that, but it tasted like decent beer. Now here we go. I have this this recent sampling. Wait, what's up with this paper? Now that was one can. And so I said, okay, maybe something was off or wrong that day. I don't know. I deleted it. Okay, so it's gone. Forget it. Because it didn't seem right. Like, this is not right. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, if I do another sample and it's that same paper, I'm just killing it. I'm going to drink the last four and I'm just going to kill it. I'm not going to waste time doing taste challenges with something that's so obviously What's the word? Flawed or something like that? There's no purpose. I don't even buy Rolling Rock that much. It's expensive around here. Around here. I mean, expensive for what it should be. I'm not paying $9.99 a 12-pack for a beer that, to me, is inferior to Miller High Life. I can get it for $7.64, a 12-pack at Walmart. So, okay, I just happened to see the Rolling Rock at Albertsons on College Avenue in Baton Rouge, right by Interstate 10, so I bought it. Oh, retraction on 
it wasn't that location. It was the Albertsons on the corner of Louisiana Highway 42 and U.S. Highway 61 in Baton Rouge, East Baton Rouge Parish. Okay, so that, okay, so I mean, I bought it, all right. I'm not wasting time on tainted stuff or, or flawed or something wrong with it. Now, these are not. There's nothing. I mean, yeah, there's that strange appearance for the Ten High. But as far as the flavor, this it's fine. It's all bourbon flavor. You know. It doesn't taste like paper. Okay, so that's that for this. And the next one is going to be, I'm not hemming and hawing about it. This The next one is going to be Old Crow. Not Old Crow. <laughs> Old Grand. Same company. Old Granddad. So the next one's going to be Ten High versus Old Granddad. And I don't see how on earth that could be close. You know, because Old Granddad is aged four years. It's got a high rye mash bill. Ten High is aged three years. It's blended. It's not going to have, it does have some Sazerac rye content, you know, because Sazerac does that rye, kind of that rye, uh, higher rye thing. But uh, no, nah, I, I can't see that being a contest. And I think Sazerac uh, Ten High is going to lose, and that's going to be strike two. I think. I don't know. But I assume it's going to lose. I, I thought I was going to tell them tell them apart correctly today, and I I failed it now. So then I'll go against the Jim Beam original. Then the Jim Beam choice, age five years, charcoal filtered. How in the world that would ever be a contest? I can't. Then the Jack Daniels black, and then the Jack Daniels green. If Ten High makes it that far, I got a funny feeling it's not going to make it. It's going to start failing. It already did. We're going to see. Time will tell. But I got a feeling it's going to flunk the test. No big deal because I wasn't expecting when I paid $9.99 and I saw that it was blended. Hey, you know, I wasn't expecting too much. Now, which one would I buy today if I had a choice? I'm pretty sure I'll buy the Old Crow at Straight Bourbon. I'm going to buy a Straight Bourbon over a Blended Bourbon any day. Now, my friend Dave Gatt, Brother Knight, or Brother Knight, Chief Officer of the Veterans of Foreign Wars in this town, he's going to pick the Blended because he prefers Blended whiskeys, right? So, once again, it's not one person's good, one person's bad, one person's great, one person's an idiot, you know, one person's smart. It's personal preference, okay? Can you understand that? <laughs> oh well thanks for watching this video production everybody have a very good and safe thursday and a great weekend see that sun coming up see that light <laughs>